And we have an example like this. We're realizing that this is really, really similar to something along these lines. If we wanted to consider this to something we've already done before in this class, we'd do something like this. Now, how would you go about simplifying that problem, getting rid of the parentheses? What's that process called? Foil. Foil. Okay, the, uh, foil is a very simplified way to say this other word. Distribute. We're going to distribute. Just like we did in the last couple examples that we did uh, last time in class, we're going to distribute this. Now, you tell me, what do you do when you distribute? What's the process? Okay, multiply. No, you're right. What's the first two things we're going to multiply? So we do the x to the fourth times x to the fourth. Now, in this process, when you distribute like stuff like this, you probably do it in your head, right? You just go x to the fourth times x to the fourth, and you're going to give me x to the sixteenth, right? Really? Well, why not x to the sixteenth? Okay, now we, we catch that in our heads usually when we do our distribution, but really in this problem, a lot of people don't catch that, and a lot of people would give me like one sixteenth out of that thing. Because they're, they're multiplying, and they're thinking, oh, we multiply. What I'd like you to do is, instead of doing these problems completely in your head, take the extra five seconds and write out one extra step. This is going to let you see the exponent rules that we've been practicing last time. Trust me on this one. If you try to do a lot of this stuff in your head, sometimes you're going to make some mistakes. If you write it out, a lot of times you catch those mistakes. Not your head for with me. So instead of doing this directly from our head, we're going to go, okay, I know I'm doing x to the fourth times x to the fourth. That's here. I know I'm going to be doing, we have a positive times, so we're going to consider that a negative, because you could write this as plus a negative, minus 7 times x to the fourth, plus 1 x to the fourth, and lastly we'll have our minus 7. You still okay on that one? Then we do the math. Then we look at the exponent rules, we go, okay, if we have x to the fourth times x to the fourth, we know that when we're we're multiplying common bases, we're not multiplying exponents, that would be an exponent raised to an exponent. We're actually adding those things. So instead of x to the 16th, we're getting what here, folks? You gotta play along. You gotta play along. Okay, you gotta be here with it. Minus 7x. Now, last time, the last thing that I taught you is that we really can't combine any like terms unless we have, I'm sorry, we can't combine terms unless you have exactly the same uh, variable raised to exactly the same exponent. So in our case I asked, could we add together something like x to the eighth and x to the fourth? Are those combinable? No, exponents are different. However, we do have a couple things that we can combine. What could we combine here? Negative 7, negative 12, and x to the fourth, x to the eighth. Good. What did x to the eighth? This right. one? No, I'm sorry, never mind. Yeah. Or these ones. X to the fourth, seven x to the fourth, okay. and x to the fourth. Now listen, you got to do this appropriately. If you're going to combine these two things here, which they are like terms of the same variable raised to the same power, you've got x to the eighth minus. Do me a favor. Combine these like terms correctly. If I combine the, these like terms, I, I'm just looking at the coefficients. Basically, I have plus or minus seven and plus one. I'm going to get negative six out of that. Mm -hmm. Am I going to get x to the 4th or x to the 8th? x to the 4th. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, because you're adding that multiplying. Okay. So if I combine like terms, I want you to realize something here. Some, some of you guys really aren't, aren't getting this, this yet. You're, you're going to see a crossover in a second, though, and then you're going to get it. If you don't have like terms here, which means you couldn't combine them, right? By combining these terms, it doesn't magically make this like term, because then you would have been able to combine these, right? So when you're combining like terms, don't change the power. The power only changes if you're multiplying things. That's when the power changes. With your combined like terms, the power doesn't change. So we are going to get still x to the fourth minus seven. There's no like terms you're done on that problem. Raise your hand if you're all right with that. Now let's draw some comparisons and do that problem. First thing we do, if we were to foil this, we're going to do the same thing here. Just don't do the stuff in your head. Go ahead and actually write out this step that's going to help you with these fractional exponents. The first thing we're going to multiply is x to the one-fourth times x to the one-fourth. We're going to write it out. We're going to write it out. We're not going to do that step in our head yet. The next thing we're going to do, you're going to notice I use the same exact numbers for a reason. That way we can just look exactly the same process of these, these things. x to the one-fourth times minus seven. You're going to get minus seven x to the one-fourth, just like you're distributing like normal. Then we get our plus x to the one-fourth 
And lastly, we're going to get our minus 7 at the very end. Do you guys see the similarity between this problem and this problem? Yes. Okay. Now, since we've written this out, we can do the, this process step by step. And as a matter of fact, you've seen some of these problems before. I mean, if I just ignore this stuff, you've seen something like that, right? That was in our exponent rules from last time. How much is x to the 1 fourth times x to the 1 fourth? Or don't tell me how much it is, but tell me what we do. Do we add, subtract, multiply, or divide those exponents? Add. So really what we're doing, if you're thinking about this, we're doing x to the 1 fourth plus 1 fourth. Do you remember that process that we, mm -hmm. we write that out? We have that? Minus, we're not going to do anything here. Or here, we'll, we'll save it to the, until the next step. Tell me, how much are we going to have if we do x to the 1 fourth plus 1 fourth? How much is that? 1 half. X to the 1 half. Good, because you're going to get 2 fourths, right? You get the common denominator already. 2 fourths simplifies to 1 half. We've got x to the 1 half minus, how much is 7x to the 1 fourth plus x to the 1 fourth? Now, I know I can combine them because I have those like terms. They, they have the same exact variable, raised to the same exact power. How much am I going to get here? Negative 6, and then x to the what? 1 half. One half. Okay. Well, you're adding. Well, let's see if that works. Does that work? No. no. Negative you need to you need to really really look at the similarities here, and I, I just I caught, caught a few people already. Okay, caught a few people already. Did you add those exponents? No. no. But for some reason, when people are dealing with rational exponents, they really, really want to add these. Uh, something in your head goes, oh, that makes one half. Okay, it happens all the time. But you need to understand the process that this is exactly the same as this. If you combine like terms here and you get x to the fourth, you are going to combine like terms here and get x to the one fourth. See the similarity? That's why I show this example when I do this problem, because I really want to make sure that you see they're the same. They're the same. But people often will do this. If you looked at this, would you be able to combine x to the 1 half and x to the 1 fourth? No, they're not even close to like terms. It's like saying, can you combine x to the 8th and x to the 4th? No, not even close. You have to have the same variable, the same exponent. Yet, when people do this thing, they will often give me x to the 1 half. Because something in your head says you're adding, I have x to the 1 fourth, x to the 1 fourth, that makes 1 half. But we're not doing that. We're combining like terms. In that case, you don't actually add those exponents. You just keep them the same. You're adding or subtracting the coefficients. Raise your hand if you see the difference there. Good, okay. So in our case, we're going to go, oh, no, 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 no. Not x to the 1 half, huh? We're combining like terms like we did there. This should still be x to the 1 fourth. And then minus 7 at the very end. Now, of course, I screwed that up too. I made a mistake by trying to purposely make a mistake. I don't know. Yeah, this is what I was talking about, the 1 fourth. The 7 was just clearly a mistake. <laughs> Now, next question. I have x to the 1 half minus x to the 1 fourth. Can I combine those? No, because it's subtracting. That would be like doing this. Okay, you can't do that. They're not the same power. Do you guys see the, the okay? Are you okay with that example? Notice how we did exactly the same process. We had one extra step because I want to do that step to show that we are actually adding, but that's. Sorry, if that was x to the 1 fourth, you could combine. combine if the this was x to the 1 fourth. Uh -huh, okay. Absolutely. That's it. Okay. Yeah. For instance, if this was a 1 16th and a 1 16th, then that would be x to the 1. No, it wouldn't be the 1 8th. Yeah, if, they were, if that was 1 4th, then we could. That's the oh, only okay. way we could combine them. Uh, just making sure. Or if this was 1 half. Mm -hmm. right? But we can't get 1 half mm -hmm. out of that. that it's not trickery. Not trying to be tricky. You no, know, know. They're the, they are the same exact exponent rules you just used here. Okay. It's just for some reason your head likes to do yeah. different things with fractions than they do with whole numbers. That's why fractions are tricky for people. Why? Are you okay with it? Yeah. Okay, you need to try a couple on your own. Let's really work through these slowly. You do not have to race through this stuff. Make sure you get it right. Okay, this is one like we did last time. I want you to work on that one. And this is one we just have looked at.
So of course, the only difference is here that we're writing out the extra step we would normally do in our head. It's still distribution. You're still getting rid of parentheses that way. By the way, if you ever get confused on what to do, sometimes it helps to write out a similar example without the fractions. For instance, if I wanted to, if I forgot what to do on this problem, I'd imagine there was no fraction here, and say, how would I get rid of x to the third times this quantity? Oh, I would, I distribute. You're doing the same process, just now you have those fractions, just carry those along with it. So on our first problem, we are going to distribute. When we distribute, we're taking our outside term, outside factor, times each of the terms inside of our parentheses. So in our case, we're going to multiply x to the 3 fifths times x to the 1 third, and then we're going to do x to the 3 fifths times x squared. Did you all get the process down at least? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're just going to write that out. Just don't do it in your head because, again, what people like to do on this is they go, oh, we're multiplying. That means I multiply fractions. I'm going to get 3 fifteenths. I've reduced to 1 fifth. A lot of people will give me 1 fifth on this problem, x to the 1 fifth, and that's not what we're going to get. Instead, what we need to understand is when we distribute, yes, we are multiplying. But what it turns out is we're multiplying common bases like that. And notice when you write it out like that, it looks like the exponent rules we just practiced. It just looks like those. Maybe you did those on your, did you do those on your homework? If you just started your homework, I hope that you did. Otherwise, you have a lot of homework in these couple days. Um, we distribute, we, we have our like terms, or sorry, yeah, we have our common bases being multiplied like this. And that clues in that we're going to add exponents. Then, of course, we have x to the 3 fifths times, we're going to consider that to be negative 2x, we'll get a minus. We're just going to write that out as well. Which way you have made it that far and have that on your paper? Okay. Now, again, when you have common bases, you don't multiply, you add. You add those things. So do this off to the side. Take your calculator out if you'd like to. Do this fraction off the side if you want. We're really just doing 3 fifths plus one third. This means x to the three fifths plus one third. This means x to the three fifths plus two. You're not going to multiply that either. Don't add one, multiply the other one. We're, we're adding both of them, both those exponents. So three fifths plus one third, of course we need a common denominator. You get nine fifteenths plus five fifteenths 